This is an update on the performance of the air to air mini split heat pump that I fitted in my property towards the end of 2023. I recorded the temperatures first thing in the morning and the average temperature was 5 degrees C. At these temperatures I recorded the COP of the mini split unit to be 4.5. Basically this means that for every kilowatt of electricity used 4.5 kilowatts of heat energy was emitted by the heat pump. This is an image of my combined energy used in January 2023. As a comparison here's my combined energy used for January 2024. This is an image of both on the same page. As you can see by these comparisons our energy costs are quite a bit lower and our comfort levels are so much higher. I am so pleased and impressed by the unit that I fitted on our ground floor that I decided to put my money where my mouth is and fit an additional unit on the middle floor of our property. I start off with the unboxing of the indoor unit. This is the larger of the units that this particular manufacturer makes in this type and it's the 12,000 BTU unit. So in the box is the usual stuff, the unit itself, the attached pipe set, um, 1.5 metres of pipe and cable and the flexible discharge pipe. At this point I'd like to thank everybody that subscribed to this channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. It is free and it gives incentive to make more videos. Thank you. Unfortunately, these units don't come with a template. So what I do initially is take some measurements of the bracket while it's fitted to the indoor unit so that I can work out where I'm going to put it on the wall. On this unit you've got to be quite careful because the bracket is not dead centre of the unit itself. This, is, this was a bit confusing for me and uh, I just took it for granted at the time that the bracket was in the centre. The next thing for me to do is to remove the blank plates so that I can bring the pipe work out of the left hand side of the unit. This can be a bit fiddly but not beyond anybody. I can only dream of the day when I get an installation where I can bring the pipe work out of the back of the unit but to date that hasn't happened yet. So once I've removed this piece I put it to one side to save it because it will be refitted later. This is just the written instructions and the remote control for the unit. I apologise if the video seems a bit jerky in places it's just I've speeded it up quite a bit. I remove this blanking plate disc or delete plate by scoring with a knife very carefully and cutting it out. I then straighten the pipes to a fashion as straight as I, I can get them for the minute. I untwist them and uh, make them make it so they take up as little space as possible within the channel that's in the unit. I then attach and make the joint of the um, drain hose uh, this is just a push fit and then I back it up with some tape. Then I join it all together with loosely with some cable ties ensuring that the drain hose is always at the bottom. Then I feed in the signal and power cable into the front of the unit um, where I need to make the various connections. This is by no means an instructional video of how to install one of these, it's just how I am doing it. So once I'm happy and it's tidy, I um, turn the unit over. You can see here I'm supporting it on some, the polystyrene packaging. That's because the face of it um, can easily get scratched. In this terminal box are the live neutral earth and signal wire. These are all the electri electrical supplies to the outdoor unit. So now it's time to uh, fix the bracket on the wall, work out where it's going and drill the various holes. As usual I use one of these detectors to ensure that I'm not um, drilling or screwing into anything that I shouldn't be. I always check the detector is functioning correctly by running it over a known cable. After fitting the bracket and hanging the indoor unit it's time to drill the hole through the external wall. For this I initially use a 3 inch or 75mm hole saw. 
I then progress on to a 3 inch or 75 mil diamond core bit. The sleeve that the uh, manufacturers supply with the unit to, to sleeve the pipework and cables through the wall is only 2 inch in diameter. That's just not enough and it's far too tight. So the pipe I use to sleeve through the wall is normally a piece of um, two and a half inch or 68 millimeter rainwater pipe cut to length. The pipes and cable snugly fit through this. The discharge pipe is quite flexible so at this point I decide I might just sleeve it in some 22mm um, overflow pipe and it sleeves over it quite well and this gives it a bit of rigidity and stops any sagging. Here I'm making sure that there's a fall on the condense pipe um, from the unit to the outside as when it's used in uh, cooling mode condensation will be produced. Getting the fall in the waste pipe is made easier with the waste pipe sleeved and clipped within a piece of plastic rigid overflow pipe. Installing one of these units does not require any specific qualifications as the refrigerant is R290 no F gas qualification required. So that's the indoor part of the installation completed. Once I've got the cable and the pipework through the ducting and on the outside of the building, it's time to wrap the pipework with the plastic bandage supplied with the unit. The technique for applying this is to start wrapping from the bottom and work your way up. This prevents any water get, getting onto the um, insulation. I then fill in the gaps around the pipe where it exits the building to prevent any drafts. I use a non-setting compound for this. You can also see that I've um, threaded the pipes, the two pipes and the cable, down through a piece of square rainwater downpipe. I prefer to use rainwater downpipe because the brackets allow it to stand off the wall a little bit and um, gives a bit of airflow around the pipe itself. Here I'm removing the protective cover that shields the pipe connections and the cable connections. It's just a case of undoing two screws and pulling the cover downwards. Here I'm showing where you make the connections for the power and the signal from the indoor unit. Here it shows the pipework and the blank offs that are on um, protecting the, the flared out ends of the pipe. So I always check the flares just in case they've, they have been damaged in transit but these are in excellent condition. To make the connections you've got to um, bend and manipulate the pipe until it fits onto the end of the union. This is always a little bit tricky but um, patience is a virtue and um, it will happen if you just give it a bit of time. I always leave the caps, the protective caps on the end of the pipe till the very last minute to prevent any contamination or damage. Once I'm 99% there I remove the caps and make the connection, um, starting the nuts hand tight only. Here you can see the pipe set fully wrapped. You can also see that I've had to extend the pipework and the cable as where I wanted the outdoor unit situated was a little bit further than the supplied pipe set and cable would reach. So now I vacuum down the pipework. 
using a vacuum pump, I vacuum the pipe work, pipe set down to negative 30. I keep the vacuum pump running for at least 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I turn the vacuum pump off and let the pipe work stand for a further 30 minutes. I do this to ensure there are no leaks in the pipe work or the fittings. The refrigerant in this mini split unit is R290 so you don't need to be F-gas qualified to do this installation. In fact you don't even have to vacuum down the pipework to complete this installation. The manufacturer's instructions say that you can do it with or without a vacuum pump. Once I'm happy there are no leaks um, it's time to disconnect the pump from the unit itself. So I disconnect the valve cover and release a little bit of positive pressure into the pipe. This ensures that no moist air is sucked back into the pipe set when I undo the connection. As you can see here I now have positive pressure at the gauge. Disconnecting the vacuum pump is quite easy. You just um, push hard on the connection, undo it and loosen it and pull it off as fast as you can. I then open the valve fully, just turning it back a touch so it won't get stuck in the future. I make sure that I um, refit both um, protection caps and tighten them up. I then remove the cap covering the bottom valve and I open that up, once again turning it back a touch once it's fully open so that in future it won't get seized. And once again um, refitting and tightening up the protective cap. So that's it, the outside unit fully fitted. Um, pay no attention to that white cable, that's something to do with the TV. As you can see from this, I've run the waste pipe down in a bit of overflow pipe and discharged it not far from the ground. As I said before, I had to extend the pipe work. Rather than use compression fittings, I decided that I would solder it. For this job, you can't just use ordinary plumber's solder. Um, you have to use a solder with a high silver content and an appropriate flux. So firstly I anneal the pipe. You don't have to do this but I find it helps. To anneal copper you just heat it till it's cherry red and then cool it down. You can quench it or let it cool naturally. I then use a suasion tool to form a socket. I'm using these small mole grips to just to steady the pipe as I've got a problem with my hand and it's hard to keep anything tight in the hand at the moment. As you can see the grips haven't damaged the pipe at all. So once I'm happy that the socket has been formed correctly and the pipe moves in and out freely, I fit the male part of the joint into the newly formed socket and mark the depth with a pencil. I then clean both parts of the joint thoroughly with steel wool. I then apply flux to both surfaces. At this point you might be shouting that I've forgotten the nut, but I'm only doing this as a demonstration. I don't require this flange at all. The solder that I'm using for this demonstration isn't quite the solder that I used to do the joints because that's quite expensive. But here it's just a demonstration, so this solder will be fine. It's got a high silver content anyway, and so it acts pretty much like the real thing. So to judge the amount of solder you need, if you're soldering a 10mm pipe, then bend over 10mm of solder at the end of the coil. 
don't have the blow lamp too hot or blasting away you just need enough to heat the pipe so the solder starts to run as you can see here the solder has run around very fast and has made a very good solid joint so that's it boxing of the pipe work took a little bit getting used to but now we don't notice it too much and my wife is very happy with the temperatures that we have in this room now perhaps in the future i'll do the costings of running two of these units and the savings that we might or might not have made thank you for your subscription and if you haven't already subscribed please give it a try it's free thank you